Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. We are in the middle of a three-phase motor and VFD upgrade for my Grizzly Geo 602 lathe. In the previous videos, we wired up the motor, got the VFD programmed, and then figured out how to solve the electrical noise problems that I was having here in the shop. Today, we're going to install the motor into the lathe. Let me grab some tools and let's get started. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna remove the backsplash. And the reason we're gonna do that is because down on this end, it covers up the motor and it makes it hard to get at a couple of the motor studs. So you can probably do this job without removing the backsplash, but it's just three screws, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. This one back here is by far the most difficult one to get to. Okay, before we start trying to mess around with the motor, I think I'm going to take this end cover off. Uh, technically, you can get at the motor and everything you need to get to here without taking this off, but it's going to be in the way, and I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get the cameras in here with it here. So start by just taking the cog belt off, and that just slips off. So this is the counter shaft, and in case uh, you're wondering if that sound was really coming from the motor, this is the spindle. You can hear it's running nice and smooth. This is the little counter shaft for the back gear or back belt. You can hear it's nice and smooth and quiet. And this is the motor. So if there's any doubt, it's definitely the motor that's at issue here. So this uh, back cover is held on to this bracket which holds the counter shaft and it's held to the lathe with three screws and they're in slotted holes, so I'm gonna go ahead and scribe around those, just so that when I go to put this back on later, I can get it in exactly the same spot. Okay. I think these are all M6 figure out which one I want to take out first. Oh, there's four, not three. <clears throat> Couldn't see one of them here underneath the pulley. I'm gonna leave that one in just to catch the weight of this thing when it comes free. <clears throat> That is a pretty good chunk of steel there. Oh, and it is oily and greasy. Let me go set this aside. Okay, as long as we've still got the motor here and we've got access to everything, I think I'm gonna go ahead and remove the motor pulley now, uh, just because this is all still bolted to the lathe and it's really easy to get to. Now, this pulley, I know you can't see in the end here, but there is a six millimeter screw and a washer that retain this pulley. The pulley is drawn onto the shaft and up against a uh, shoulder in the back. And I would grab my phone and get you some shots inside the end of this, except that my phone decided that right now would be an excellent time to apply a software update. Okay, so they, the, um, the washer and the screw that we're retaining this are now out, but of course, there's no way I'm pulling this off by hand. Uh, it's pressed on. So I'm gonna use a gear puller. Now, part of the issue here, though, is that the end of this gear puller is actually larger than the hole in the pulley. So I can't 
push directly on the end of the shaft. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a, a longer six millimeter cap screw and I'm going to thread that in to the shaft and then I'm going to have the gear puller bear on the end of that screw. this a bit to get it over the pulley. Okay, there we go. Bearing on the screw, get a nice straight shot to the shaft. This is more or less straight, straight as a tool from Harbor Freight ever gets. And let's extract the pulley. Yeah, that's coming off really easily. Okay, I can feel it's loose on there. Take the puller off. And we should be able to just pull this right off. Okay. So this is the back, it's got the cog on it for the cogged belt to drive the back shaft. And then the pulley on the front, and there is a steel gear here, probably just for strength, and the whole thing is put on with a key. The key here is pretty tight, um, and I have to, there's a backing washer here that needs to come off as well, which I can work free here with a screwdriver. This backing washer forms the back side of the cog belt uh, pulley here. It sits against this and keeps the belt captured on the teeth. So that needs to come off, but it has no keyway in it, so the key has to come out. I'm just going to put a pair of vice grips on it and then use a screwdriver to lift it. There we go. And this should come right off. Now, when we put the new motor on here, uh, the motor is going to be in this same position, but I'm, and there's a shoulder on the back of this shaft. And we need to be able to uh, have the new motor with that shoulder in the same position relative to the face of this pulley so that the, the pulley will align. And so I need to make a measurement there. Let me get some tools and see if I can measure the depth from this face back to that pulley, or back to the shoulder. I've got a scale from a square, and I'm just going to put that on this pulley and hold it in place. And that gives me a position here that I can measure out from that shoulder. And it looks like it is going to be about It's almost exactly, it's just over 2.8 inches, I'm going to call that 2.825. And that'll be close enough, let me go write that down, 2.825, and when we install the other motor we'll try to get it in that same position. Okay, let me get some of this stuff out of the way, and uh, we'll go about opening up the back of the lathe here and disconnecting the electronics. Okay, got the camera turned around here, and uh, sorry for the tight quarters. I didn't want to move the lathe, and so getting to the back of this with the cameras was a little bit tricky. So definitely have this unplugged, and it's going to stay unplugged uh, for the duration of this project. And I'm going to open up the electronics boxes on the back of the motor and on the back of the um, back of the lathe frame itself. See what we're dealing with. Going to disconnect the electronics here and. Uh, remove the motor from the lathe. Oh, that was nice and simple. Nice and rusty, too. Okay, I think the easiest thing... Let's go ahead and open the top here and see what's on the other end of this cable. Okay, 
that goes all the way through. I'm probably gonna have to cut this at some point, but for now, let's see, am I gonna be able to get that out of there? No, I'm gonna have to cut this. Let me go ahead and get some wire cutters and just go ahead and do it now. Figure if I cut it near the end here, then in the future, if I do ever need this again, I can pretty easily uh, just crimp new connectors on here and I can leave the stubs on the motor and I know exactly where they were supposed to go. Some red on the cable here. I just had to check and make sure that's not leaking out of me somewhere. It's not, it's just paint or something. Okay, so the motor's disconnected. I could take that off, but I also wanna pull some of the rest of this out of here. Um, specifically, I wanna reuse this contactor. So I'm gonna get that disconnected and out of there. Apologize again that you can't see this very well, but I'm just loosening all the terminals and taking all the wires off the contactor. That's the contactor, and I've just got a couple more wires to pull here. And that is the contactor, and I'll go ahead and pull out the DIN rail too. Nothing's going back in this box. I'm hoping the rest of this, I can just pull out the front once I'm, uh, when I rewire this later. But for now, I'm just gonna stuff it back in here. And we're gonna put the cover on because I don't need to be in there anymore. Okay. Power cord's out, so no risk somebody will accidentally plug this in again. Okay, the motor's held on with four nuts on studs, and I'm not really sure what these are. A 14 millimeter wrench is a little sloppy, but nothing else that I have, SAE or metric, will fit it. Let's see if we can actually get in here and loosen these things. The clearance is very tight. Fact. This may end up being a real challenge. These bottom ones at least. got that lower back screw off. I tried a bunch of stuff. Tried taking the bell off to get more access to it and that didn't work out. I could only get two of the screws out because one of them was on the back. And I finally got that last screw, that last bolt, by reaching in with a with a, a, a combination wrench and I could get in there and lift it a little bit. Then I could get in from the other side, get on this way, go down just a little bit. Then I could get back on this side and lift it a little bit, and then that gave me enough room to get this end on one more tooth and lift it, and work through from the other side and work it down. And then I got a pry bar under it and I worked the motor back and forth like this while lifting with the pry bar until I finally got the, it slid up on the slot with just enough clearance to then get the wrench back in by working on both ends with the open end and flipping it both directions. So I'm reaching in and reaching out 
I finally got that nut off, and that was very, very difficult. Let's take the others off. Let's see where we end up. Okay, that's off, and now this is the last one. Okay, and the motor should come free. Ugh, finally. Take these nuts off. It looks like there were washers on both sides. But that's probably only because there's a hollow here that the washers were needed on the studs. Okay, let me get this motor out of here. Okay, we've got four washers, and were the washers on the back? The washers must have been on the front and just gotten dropped. So the washers go under the nuts. That makes sense. Two, three, four. Okay. Let me get this cleaned up a little bit and uh, go get the new motor. Okay, this is the new motor, and the only thing that's happened to this motor since you last saw it is I took the cooling fan and attached it. And it's just zip tied into the grill on the back here and has wires attached. So this should be ready to go on. Then you look, the bolt pattern will fit. Of course. Okay, it doesn't fit down all the way, and that I think is because there were little spacers on the studs. Let me pull those off. Since the base of this motor isn't hollow. Okay, now let's see how that fits. Oh yeah, that's better. Let's see if we can get enough teeth on here to feel good about it. Yeah, that's going to be enough. And as one might have expected, that last one is going to be a bear. Here we go. Motor is in. Okay, let's grab the scales. Let's see where the shoulder sits. And remember, we're looking for two inches, 825. Yep, we're gonna call that good. We're gonna get that last one on the back tight and we'll call that motor installed. Close enough. Okay, now we just need to get the pulley back on here. Getting that motor swapped out was an ordeal. Um, that's going to be a rough edit because I spent like an hour messing around with different kinds of wrenches and tools trying to reach in here, trying to be able to get onto these studs and get this motor swapped out. It is finally there, it's finally mounted securely, and now we can move on to uh, mounting the pulley. Now this shaft on the new motor has a captured key, and if you look at this, you can see the keyway ends. It doesn't, it's not open out the end of the shaft. Now I think the original pulley on the original motor that came with this lathe, I think they may have put the pulley on first, 
hammered it on, which you know might explain some of the motor noise, and then hammered the key in. The first time it came off, it was a very difficult thing to remove um, because the key was jammed, um, and then getting the key, and the key just basically fell out once the once the pulley was off. This one has a captured key, so the key will press in, and it is a light press fit. Um, and then the pulley goes on over that, and as you take the pulley on and off, it doesn't uh, it doesn't pull the key out. So the first thing is this backer uh, washer, the shim. Push it back, and then we have to put the key in. Now the key is a tight fit, so I'm going to have to squeeze that in with something. I've got a pair of channel locks here. They should do the job. Just snug it in. Okay, that's nice. And then the pulley goes on. Now the pulley will go part way on just by hand as soon as I get the key lined up. But it won't go all the way on by hand. It's just that's as far as I can get it. Now, I have seen people on YouTube hammer these things on. I have seen people uh, take the pulley and take a sander or a dowel with some sandpaper and actually enlarge the hole in the center. Uh, we don't need to do any of that stuff. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take some longer M6 screws and we're just gonna draw it on using the uh, threads in the end of the shaft. As long as we got threads, then we don't have to hammer on anything. Now it's easier just to turn the pulley here. Hopefully you can see that going on. It's that time of year my neighbors are all out working on their lawns today. Okay, that's as far as it'll go with that screw. Now let's get a shorter one and run it the rest of the way down. This should be the actual final screw that goes in the hole. And not long enough yet. Got a little ways to go. Let's try a little bit longer one. Once we get this drawn down far enough, then the original screw will fit. Okay. And let's go back to the original screw that we should be able to leave in there. There we go. And that's the pulley. Let's see how it lines up. Right, that's within, I'd say 10 or 20 thousandths. I think that is gonna be close enough. Try with a belt here and just make sure the belts are gonna fit. Oh yeah, the belt position is excellent. Okay, now we just need to put the cover back on. Let me go grab it. Okay, the last thing that we need to do here is reinstall this cover. And this is quite heavy. So I'm just gonna get one of these screws started. If I can. Okay, let me prop this up with a block of wood. There we go. Okay, let's drop in another one here. And the third. Okay, I'm gonna try to line up the score lines that I made before I took it off. Hit 
before I snug it all the way down. Let's make sure that fits up. Yeah, I think that's going to be all right. Give these a good snug. Okay, and the last thing is to make sure the, uh, oh, that's much quieter than the old motor. Make sure that the cog belt fits. Okay, that's tighter than it was before, let me. Loosen this up just a bit. Well, I think that's very similar to the fit before. I'm not sure if we've got a slight misalignment and that's causing the uh, that additional sound, or if I just never noticed the sound before. And I don't think it's misalignment. I think probably the old motor was so noisy, I just never even noticed the sound of those teeth. We'll snug this down. And that, I believe, is the motor install complete. Well, that is the motor installed, and I will be the first to admit that took a lot more time than I had anticipated, just because of the difficulty of getting the wrench in on the nuts on those studs. If I had it to do over again, would I jack the lathe up to get more room? Maybe. If I had to do over again, I also know how to get the wrench in there, and I could do it without nearly as much trouble. But I think it was worth it, as you can see, or rather hear. That horrible squawking is gone, and soon we're going to have a little knob up here for variable speed on the lathe, and that's going to make this a lot more useful. Well, I think that's it for today. Next week, we're going to stuff all the electronics in a box, get it mounted up, get the controls wired, and uh, do some testing. Until then, if you're enjoying these videos, if you find them useful, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching.